becoming a woman of excellence. This show's topics are relevant, radical, and may sometimes be controversial, but they are definitely led by the Spirit. So now, we invite you to sit back, listen, enjoy, and yes, participate in becoming a woman of excellence. Now, here is your host of the show, Dr. Jeanette Evans Copeland. Thank you for staying with us. We've got a bodacious show today. Now we're going to be talking with a Derek Saunders. And I'm going to tell you how I met Derek. I was minding my own business and I came across something that he had written. Men who approach relationship with purpose and the heart of a servant and entertain such foolishness as casual dating shouldn't be. They understand that women are, they should understand that women are gifts from God to be treasured, not playthings to be dealt with in any careless, casual manner. There is a much higher calling for the relationship. Is he on the phone? Okay, good. There's a much higher calling for the relationship between a man and a woman. They are the nucleus of the family, ordained of God, and marriage honors them. And that's how I met Derek. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. How in the world are you? I am good. I'm good. Very good. I can't complain. Very good. Now, you heard the introduction that I gave you. And then I did a little survey. I asked several people if they knew anyone who was celibate. And I asked them, and I, it was so desperate, I started asking them from the age of seven. <laughs> <laughs> I started asking at the age of seven. Nobody knew. Nobody even understood the concept, even in these days of HIV and AIDS. So now we want to talk to you about why is it that young men are ashamed to make it known that they are virgins. What's up with that, Derek? Now you know why. Um, well, let me let me make two distinctions. One, I'm not a virgin, which actually makes it a little more difficult and should make it easier for people to relate to me. Uh, that, because most I'm, people uh, that are listening aren't either. Uh-huh. And let me make the distinction, because my friend corrected me on this as well when I, I said celibate as opposed to abstinence. Celibacy oh, is a difference. Yes, okay. Is a difference. Life law is, is what, uh, like, uh, Catholic priests take a vow of celibacy, celibacy where they will never have sex again for, you know, for their, for their role in, in their church. Uh-huh. Abstinence uh-huh. is when we remain, uh, sexually pure. We don't engage in sexual activity until marriage. Uh huh. Okay. I think the reason the reason why is because, uh, especially for men, we've not been taught. I mean, that's been in, in our culture. We've been taught that you prove your manhood mm-hmm. by engaging in, in sex, and not just engaging in sex, but in sex with a lot of women. Mm-hmm. And that that's a value that that we have actually for most young men. It's the only rite of passage that leads us into manhood. That's at least that's what most of us have been taught. And most of us have never heard men talk about uh, manhood and showing love for a woman by offering her that gift. I mean, it, it, as well as we're pleasing God when we do it, but we're also showing a woman that she has value beyond sex. Mm-hmm. And but, I think most of us have not been taught that. I wasn't. Right. There's a, hi, um, Derek, this is Carolyn. I'm um, Dr. Copeland's co-host. And um, we were going through the scriptures um, just to get some reference regarding, you know, marriage and um, sex and such. And there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians 7 and 2 uh, that says, But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife own and wife. each woman her own husband. So the mm-hmm. Bible is clear uh, and you're right about not uh, yeah. not having been taught that, and it's you know, but it states right there exactly why uh, abstinence and um, uh, should be practiced. Right, and, and Paul goes further. He says uh, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. He recommends that uh, that we all be as he, if, if possible, to devote ourselves solely to, to, to God. Right. Mm-hmm. But Paul also comes back and says, if you can't contain yourself, he said, get married. Mm-hmm. 
He said it's better to marry than to burn. And burn, he wasn't talking about burning in hell. He was talking about burning as having a desire for sex with another person. And the answer to that is not to have sex, it's to get married. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why uh, you don't uh, think that casual dating should be looked at as so casual is that are you saying that as christians well as non-christian too that casual dating is not a good idea Uh, definitely and even if people are not engaging in sex is not a good idea because you you start opening yourselves up to certain emotions i think even more so for women um and and it puts a woman in a bad position i think more so than men even if they're not having sex so if I, if I wasn't, even if I wasn't having sex, I would not be spending a whole lot of time with a young lady that I knew I had no real interest in. Mm-hmm. Well, how'd you come to I'm, that conclusion, Derek? I mean, now, really, how'd you come to that conclusion that if I don't have serious intentions, I don't, how are you going to get to know the young lady? Well, i tell you, my girlfriend, we've been together 11 months now. I told her when we first started dating that I date for the intention of getting married. I What's told her early on, probably the second date maybe, that I did not intend on having sex with her until I got married. The reason I told her that, I wasn't trying to impress her because, as you know, in our society, that's not really impressive. If anything, that's weird for a lot of women. It is, it is. be from a man. But I told her that because I realized if I spend time with her and she's interested in me, and I decided to be with somebody else, I'm hurting her unnecessarily. So I told I said, I told her up front what my intentions were. And I told her that I wasn't, I wasn't planning on having sex with her until I got married because that made, those things are important. And some women would have been like, you know, I can't wait that long. I need to know what I'm getting. And I wanted to tell her so that she could make a decision up front and she knew what, what she was getting into and what I was what about. What she was getting into. Mm-hmm. Hey, the other Derek. thing is, if I, I play around with her and I'm just going out with her, spending time with her, and she thinks that this is something that is not, and then I start dating somebody else, she's hurt. Right. Hey, Derek, this is Val. I have a question. The 11 months that you are seeing your uh, girlfriend, is that called casual dating? No, that's not called casual dating at all. I set those parameters when we first started dating. I told her that I dated for the purpose of getting married. So you're actually the reason I told her, her that it was because my intent was to date her yeah. to find out if she and I were compatible for marriage. So no, it was not casual dating at all. Okay, casual what's your definition? Would have been me telling her that I'm not interested in getting married. Well, what's your definition of it. casual dating? Let me ask you that. I'm sorry. Uh, casual dating from guys and 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 different ones that I have conversations with are people who say that they don't want to get married. Or they're not, you know, they're not ready for a serious relationship. And that, and that that's what I usually call a disclaimer. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times mm-hmm. guys will tell girls that. <laughs> not ready for a serious relationship. So what's the vernacular? Oh, we're just and, kicking it. And that's it a disclaimer because other- then when he begins to engage in all of the activities that you do in a serious relationship, and she wants to define that relationship, he reminds her of his initial disclaimer. Right. Mm-hmm. So would you consider yourself to be courting your um, girlfriend, you were in courtship, which is taking right. it all the way back to basics. Um, uh, there was a time right. in our society um, that you had a chaperone um, that um, if well, you... Well, no, we ain't doing chaperone. Well, girl. I'm just saying back, there was a time. <laughs> there was a time. There was a time. <laughs> well, that's right. Right. There was well, a that's time. Right. Yes. That's right. And then in some cultures, even so today, you know, and... Um, and so, uh, I guess to use the vernacular, dating, kicking it, um, you just hanging exactly. out, we're just friends, but with all the uh, benefits thereof. Right. And yes. so, that's eliminated um, in your world. And, and what you're trying to, to impress on, on all of us who may be single in the same situation, um, looking for marriage and uh, not to be played with. Well, tell me, uh, 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 how did your girlfriend, who was not your girlfriend on the second date, how did she respond to that? I'm sure she appreciated your honesty, but how did she respond? Well, she appreciated it more now, and she appreciated it more as the relationship progressed because, of course, she never heard that before. And she was, wait- you know, she was waiting, probably like a lot of females, 
uh, a lot of ladies have encountered men. She was waiting on that angle. You know, yeah, you're saying that it sounds good right now. But she's told me that she, she appreciates that because, you know, you start having sex in a relationship, that becomes the, 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 the it takes the, the forefront of your relationship. It becomes the, the, the great equalizer. It, it becomes a problem solver. And when you're not having sex with a person, you don't, you have, you have more, uh, you, you really don't have much of a choice but to find other things or a, a real reason to like this person or find out you know, who this person is and to deal with certain issues that you need to deal with because that becomes, you know, that big part of your relationship is, you know, is eliminated. And the relationship is not sidetracked by that because, like I said, I'm not a virgin. Mm -hmm. I've been in those relationships where, mm -hmm. you know, that just takes over the relationship. Mm -hmm. So with us, we've had a chance to actually deal with real issues. Such as? How we handle... We, the issues we've dealt with, money, how we handle money, mm -hmm. our, our different uh, beliefs in terms of how we were raised, mm -hmm. religiously, mm -hmm. how our family, you know, the fam all of the tough stuff I think a lot of times that people don't want to deal with because usually when you're dating somebody, we just want to have fun and we don't want to deal with any of the stuff that might cause controversy or where we, we don't see eye to eye. And from my understanding and I think for everybody else, no relationship ever falls apart where people agree. The relationships fall apart where we I don't disagree. agree. Mm -hmm. And those are yeah. usually the things that we try to avoid because we want to keep having all of the good time. We want to keep enjoying the romance and all of the other things that we like rather than focusing on the things that are necessary mm -hmm. to support and to create a good foundation for that relationship. Mm -hmm. well, those are the things that we have to deal with. Well, Gary... Our time is running out, but this is not your last time on this show. But I just wanted to give what I read. Given the right environment, proper care, a little sunshine, and a lot of love, a flower will flourish. And the same is true of a woman. Derek, are you spreading the word? We're so glad that you came. We will be talking. I appreciate you so much. God bless you. Thank you for you. having me. Okay, again, you'll be here again. Bye-bye. Yeah, we Bye. definitely have to have uh, Derek on. The phones have been blowing up, and uh, we got to have him address some of these calls very soon. But